What I want to chat about today is a tablet editor and how to use it to debug your DAX. So here I have the Contoso Lite um, Power BI dataset, which has been provided by SQL BI. I use a lot of their training material, and so I thought this one would be really useful because we all understand it. So when you click on um, the table, you can see we've got a matrix. What you can do is if you click on View and then Performance Analyzer, we can actually capture the DAX query that is um, that has been created to 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 create this visual. So if we click on it and then click Start Recording and refresh Visuals, you'll see in the matrix we've got the DAX query. So if I copy the query and then I go into Tabular Editor. Tablet to Editor 3 is what, what I use and I've been using for a while now. It, it's just such a good resource. Um, there is a cost element to it, but it, the time that it saves me, it, it, it's just it's a no-brainer, really. Um, so when we are in Tablet Editor 3, if I open the model and then go into the local instance and click on Contoso Lite, and I tend to do this because I'm always working in desktop. Um, that might change, but so we click on OK and you can see it brings my model up with all of the different tables and I've got all of the different features within Tabular Editor. And I'm, I'm going to do a series of links on videos on how to use Tabular Editor from a non-programmer's perspective. But if we click on DAX query here, what we're able to do is we're able to do control V and copy our query in. Um, now it's really complex because it, it's a matrix and the code behind creating a matrix, the DAX query is, is a bit crazy really. But if we press F5, you can see it comes up to show us is the grand total and it returned five rows. And it's, it's really not what I want to, um, to debug and measure. So, what I tend to do is I change my matrix to a table. I just like having the year at the top. And and the other tip I would give you is get rid of the totals. If you get rid of the totals, it makes the DAX query so much simpler. So now um, we'll clear, refresh, and copy the query again. Go back into Tabular Editor and I've just clicked in here, Control A to select all and then Control V to replace, paste and replace. And then if I press F5 again, you can see my table so much clearer. Um, my code is so much clearer. Um, and what you can do, we don't even need this primary window. It always tends to put it in there. All we need to do is just change that to be core. And run F5. And you can see now we've got this lovely, nice little simple DAX query. Um, and what we can do is we can then say, right, okay, well, I'm not quite sure about this particular cell. So I'm going to right click and debug the cell. And then DAX debugger opens. And what I like to do is I just like to move this over to the right so I can see what I'm evaluating, but I can also then see the DAX debugger as well. So we have in here, and I, I really like the way we can just move the windows around. So I'm just moving that across. So we've got our locals window, which shows us exactly what what the value is of the cell that we're evaluating now, which is 2018 and Canada. And you can see, you can just marry the two of them up. Um, evaluation context shows us um, you know, what the evaluation context is. And then if you look at the cool tree, the cool tree shows you we're currently at the measure, but as we start to step into the measure, it shows you how the measure is, um, how the measure is written and what's happening. So up here, and this is a simple start to start with, with a sum X. So we're going to step over it. So we click, this is our full measure, where it's our sum X over sales, sales quantity times next price, and it's 206. So as I step 
over it, you can see that currently now we're on the sales. So this is the sales table. We're summarizing the columns. These are this is the row context that it is showing us what's happening. And see this little arrow here is telling us that it's iterating over sales. So we go to the next bit and it tells us now this is this is the next thing that's happening. Quantity for this particular row is one. The sales net price is 393 and it's evaluating at 393.48. And you can see it's moved there to the row context. And as we continue through, it will show us what the quantity is. See where the arrow is changing again? And here what the net price is. So it, it's a really useful way of understanding exactly what is happening with with your measures and where it really comes into your own is where we start to use calculate and all filters and uh, all and all selected etc so another way and i like i prefer this way if you click on the pivot grid and i really like the pivot grid and click on country so i'm putting country here this is my row um, and in my date I'm putting year, which I'm going to put here. And then I'm choosing a measure that is in my sales table. And I'm choosing one that's a little bit more complex. So this is the top end sales. And if you click on the top end sales here in an expression editor, you can see how it's calculated. But we're going to go through that in a moment. So if I'm just going to click on online, I want to know why that's that's calculated. So if I click debug and you'll see my DAX debugger is here. But what I want to do is I want to put my um, power query there. So my sorry, my pivot grid there so I can see what's happening. And so I can see it's 2020 I was interested in online and you can see here the evaluation evaluation context is telling me 2020 and it's online and the current expression is 237.592 and on my call tree these are all of the things that are going to happen as I iterate through. So you can click on here and you can step into the measure and it shows me the measure. So we've got a variable which is creating a table using calculate table. Now if I use this, this goes into much more detail um, and it's calling stepping in. So I'm actually stepping into my variable table. So it's a calculate table. So it's showing me here. These are all the measures. These are all the values. And this is the date. This is my calculate table. And what I really like is it then shows me the order of precedence. So the calculate table is being filtered by date date, which is um, 18th of May 2017. And as you flick through, you will see how the values change to, to show what it's actually looking at. We can flick through. So and this is this is quite interesting. So because we've now applied this filter to our variable table using calculate table, this row context is no longer valid because we've got the date time, which is 2017. So it, it just helps understand how your DAX is working. Then again, we're iterating over sales to pull out, we're not iterating, we're, we're using the sales table to pull out the order number. And then um, for that first row that we're looking at, that would be the order number then the quantity and you can see how it's iterating through to find out the um, the different amounts the arrows are changing so you can see what the row context is if we open up the filter calculate table it's being um, filtered it's an implicit all date how nice is that? So it's to get rid of all the filters on date which is why our date is now we're ignoring the 2010 from our um, from our row context, which has been been wiped out, and it just adds so much clarity to what the DAX is doing. And you can see, you can so here on the cool tree, we can open up the cool tree, so we can then see what's happening with the concatenate X. So 
So it gives a huge amount of information about what is happening to your DAX measure. So you can really understand precedence, you can understand each row, you can understand the different functions that we're pulling in and and what it's doing. Um, So I hope you found this useful. I I, I didn't understand DAX debugger. I couldn't really get my head around it. But um, SQL Bits, which is just brilliant. I went to the conference there, watched the session, and then um, sat down at the tabular editor table and didn't move until they explained it to me, which they did very, very kindly. So thank you. Um, but I hope this makes sense to you.